what's the difference between an IP address and a MAC address? In order to explain that, let's first talk about IP and IP routing at a very high level. It's a layer three protocol. Here we have different networks. There's the 20 network, the 55, the 72, the 99, and the 69. All these networks are interconnected. Each one of these networks represent a service provider, internet service provider, or telco. And they all have peering agreements between each other. So they're all interconnected maybe by a fiber, maybe copper, maybe wireless. There are different ways, a T1 line, um, all kinds of different ways to connect uh, different uh, internet service providers. So one might be Charter, one might be Centralink, one might be um, Comcast, at least in the US there are different um, service providers. And they each have their own group of logical IP addresses. So the INA uh, gives out a block of IP addresses and then there are different registries around the world that then give out um, those IP addresses to service providers and then those service providers might give one or a couple unique IP addresses to a customer so maybe like you or me like you or me or a business or something like that so the reason why they do that is because we want to make sure that every person that connects to the global internet has a unique IP address otherwise there'd be too much confusion and it wouldn't work so well if multiple people had the same public IP address. It just wouldn't work. And another reason why we do that, giving out blocks of addresses, is because it would be too difficult, probably impossible, to have a router, each router on the internet, have a list of all of the unique IP addresses in the world. It would just be impossible. So what we do is we put them into groups, networks. So again, each of these ISPs have their own group of IP addresses and to get to different networks they might use the routing protocol BGP and it might take this route through this network or it might go through here or from the 99 to get to the 55 it might take this route or it might take this route complicated route so it depends on whether the link is up how trustworthy it is all kinds of things that IP does to get to your ultimate destination so you can think of IP as maybe public transportation, um, different airports getting to that, getting to your ultimate destination. You could also think of it as maybe the United States Postal Service. So each town, each place in the U.S. has a unique um, zip code, right? So in order to get a letter to someone, they usually use the zip code. So this you could think of as a zip code, unique zip code area. This is another unique zip code area and so on and so forth. And the Postal Service will send it um, to that area, that logical group of addresses. So for example, 72.5.1.11 might be unique might be a unique person, but all the service provider cares about is the first two digits. Again, the zip code, logical groups of numbers. So it tosses it here. It makes it easier to make routing decisions to get it to its ultimate destination, which is really cool. So for example, let's say uh, the 99 network, and we have a customer off of that network. So as a customer, uh, you purchase internet service. It's a monthly fee, usually and you get one unique IP address. So you get internet access at your business or your residential home. So in order to get to another network, let's say you need to get to the 55 network, there's a customer off there, another uh, user, you'll send that uh, packet to your service provider, and then the service provider will deal with its ultimate destination and get it to the 55 network, and once it gets there, that service provider will know that unique IP address. So maybe you're trying to send it to 5511.99.2. And it will check it out the correct area and give it to your network in your home. So once it gets to the 55 network here and it gets to your, your place of business where that router is, it has that IP address right here, it'll get to your gateway. So here we have the internet 
this is your service provider, ISP, telco, whatever you want to call them. It gives you internet access and it gets to your gateway. So this is where the interesting part is, uh, uh, MAC addresses. So this is where they come into play. So once it gets to your gateway router, for example, let's say uh, the, the packet that comes in here, now it needs to go to the IP address um, of 192.168.0.2. Now the router will say, oh, it's out this interface. It's part of that network. That's how IP works, the layer 3. But since we're at a local network here, we're dealing with layer 2. Switches are pretty dumb devices. They only know MAC addresses. So you can think of MAC addresses as the DNA. It makes you, you. Like every person on the planet has, I guess, a unique DNA strand. Every networking device in the world has a unique MAC address. It makes that device unique. So each network port on a computer, on a tablet, on a phone, um, maybe phone, tablet, computer, anything that has really a network connection, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, it'll all have a, a MAC address. And you, you might find it on a sticker on the back of the, the port, which is uh, pretty cool. You can change it. Some devices allow you to change it to something else, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's usually never a good idea. Just like messing around with your genes. Probably not a good idea. So in order to find out the MAC address of that IP address, the router will send out a special special message <laughs> to everybody on the network. So it'll say, hey, who has, what's the MAC address of 192.168.0.2. So it'll send out an ARP request to the switch. The switch will send it out all other ports. And all these computers are listening. And Fluttershy here says, oh, oh, I'm I'm that IP. Here's here's my MAC address. So it sends an ARP reply back to the sender. And it says, hey, hey, router, I'm BB. That's That's my IP address, right? That makes me me. It's my DNA. So the, the router will say, oh, sweet. So it will know the destination MAC address. So it will put that into the destination MAC address of the frame. So it will send it out now, that packet. And then the switch will receive it. And it will say, oh, I, I know where BB lives. It's out this port. So it sends it, to the, it sends it to this computer. And it gets it to its ultimate destination. So to recap, IP deals with end-to-end -end communication and then MAC address deals with getting to the right device on your network so it deals with you can think of it as your DNA the unique person so again MAC, um, IP addresses are logical groups of networks it gets it to the right area but once it's in that area what unique person does it go to layer 2 so layer 3 and layer 2 work hand in hand to get information to the correct computers. So I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.